This is a Dude Studios production. And hey, I'm the Dude. Mint Mobile has reimagined the wireless shopping experience and made it way easier. There's no stores, no salespeople, no nonsense. Just a huge savings on the nation's largest, most reliable 5G network. With plans as low as $15 a month, you have unlimited talk, unlimited text, and you can find the perfect data plan that suits you. You can even bring your old phone if you're still used to it. Or if you want to get rid of your old phone and upgrade, Mint Mobile has a large selection of phones for you to choose from. Just follow the link for Mint Mobile in the description of this podcast. Check out the plans and the opportunities for you to save some money with your new wireless service. Go to mintmobile.com today. Hey, it's Bar Daddy from TikTok. You are listening to Hey Bartender Podcast. Yeah, my wife. My Wi-Fi should be working too. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> let, anyway, let's just okay. get started. So, uh, Kate Stewart, welcome to Hey Bartender Podcast. Uh, thank you so much for taking some time off to be on the show. Uh, how you been? Uh, you doing okay? You're uh, everything going okay? Yes, everything's. <laughs> Great. Um, work is getting busy again. Uh, working at a ramen restaurant um, with the cooler weather, everybody wants ramen and soup, so we've been getting busier. And a bunch of my side projects have been working well too. Yeah. So always yeah. being busy. Okay. Yeah, you mentioned ramen, and all of a sudden, yeah, now I'm hungry. But uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, b- uh, before we get started, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Okay. Um, hi, I'm Katie. I am 29 years old. I turned 30 in like less than a month. Um, I've been bartending for nine years. I guess the moment I turned 21 is when they threw me behind a bar, basically. <laughs> cool. Um, and I live in Richmond, Virginia, and I'm a bar manager at Food Dog, um, a little ramen spot down in the middle of like the heart of the city. And yeah. Okay. That's really about it. I don't really have much else going on. <laughs> well, that's cool. Uh, anyway, so like I uh, like I was telling you bef- uh, before, when I first start off the show, I like my guests to, especially if they're bartenders, uh, to give the drink special for the day. So what have you got for us? Okay, so this is actually something that I found um, through my comments on TikTok. Um, I don't really have a name for it, but I put my own little twist on what this um, – follower commented to me um if you like dark rum actually it's a spice rum we'll be using bamboo the original and we'll be um mixing up with a little bit of pomegranate juice and a ginger liqueur and it's going to be tasty perfect for the holidays Mm -hmm. little holiday drink doesn't have a name though so i need to think of a name if anybody can think of a name so uh how do how do you make it recipe so it'll be about an ounce and a half of bamboo original um it's a barbados spice rum um, it will be about a half ounce, a half ounce of Barrow's Intense Ginger Liqueur, or you can use the main decanton or whatever ginger liqueur you have. Um, this is really, really spicy. This is like biting into a ginger root. Ooh. Um, you're going to squeeze half a lime, and then you're going to top it with pomegranate juice, and it is delightful. So Sounds like it's probably sweet with a little bit of a bite to it at the end. Yeah, it's kind of to balance everything out, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, that's so. Okay. It's not over, and you don't have a name for that right now. I don't. I just. I. I'm really good at being creative when it comes to making drinks. So when it comes to names, I have no idea. My partner named all of my like cocktails for my restaurant. So <laughs> good at the creativity, not good with coming up with funny names. Yeah. Or like that. Looks like you got a great bar set up. Uh, I'm sorry for uh, being an audio podcast. People can't see uh, can't see the setup unless they follow you on your on your social media. But you got look got like right. a great setup there. I do. Um, what's funny is that I had at my old apartment. My my roommate and I we um, both moved to the same apartment together. Uh, we had a coffee bar, which this is what we use the coffee bar for. This huge space. And then we had like a little tiny stand for our liquor. And then when the pandemic and the lockdown hit, we kind of did this, like the spring cleaning thing because we're inside and bored. Moved every, all the liquor over to this part of the room, 
or this piece of furniture and then switched everything. And then I kept getting sent different liquors and stuff like that. And now I'm running out of space. <laughs> yeah. And all very unique bottles. Uh, yeah, but that's, just, uh, that's cool. I haven't heard of most of that stuff that you have there, but, uh, Me either. <laughs> but I'm always, I'm always interested to get different and new things just to mess with and make, and I guess to stay creative. That's the reason why I made TikTok originally. Yeah. But yeah. And I'm a little like jealous. Little I'm a little jealous of your neon sign. So. <laughs> oh, my sister got me that. It's awesome. I love my neon sign. <laughs> Modes and stuff like that. Oh, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Once again, sorry. Uh, sorry to the listeners that that's mostly visual. Maybe uh, I've got to uh, get with the times and become a video video podcast sometime soon. But, <laughs> um, but then you can have your own thing on sign. Yeah. Uh, for right now, I got a flag. <laughs> so, yeah, your flag is pretty cool. Uh, but anyway, so let's get back to uh, get back to things. So, um, how long you been? Uh, how long you been working in the service industry? I've been working in the service industry since I was 17, so almost about 15 years or so, a little bit less than that. Um, I started as a host at um, Buffalo Wild Wings, oh, and yeah. I was also like the buffalo because I was the perfect height for the little buffalo suit. <laughs> so I was a host, and I was the buffalo, and kids were mean, and they pulled on my horns and stepped on my hooves, and <laughs> they were ungrateful, <laughs> but... um. I was it, working in the service industry when I was going to school. Um, I was when I became a part time student. I started working just full time at a restaurant. Um, I was hosting, and then I got quickly switched to like serving. And the moment I turned twenty one, actually that's not true. A couple of days after I turned twenty one, because they're smart, <laughs> <laughs> they sat me down and said, "We would like to put you on bar training. Are you interested? You have the attitude of a bartender," which being a really like a smart ass 21 year old, I just thought that didn't really mean much to me. <laughs> I didn't know. What that yeah. That I have an attitude. Yeah. But well, uh, attitude works behind the bar really well. You know, builds, you know, makes your character more interesting to the customer. I think, uh, I've worked with, I agree. I've worked with some of, uh, so many different personalities and the, uh, the personalities that usually stick out are either the overly kind and generous people or the overly sarcastic, uh, sarcastic people. I'm. I was somewhere in the middle. Uh, uh, I was unexpected to be sarcastic, and I was always unexpected to be extremely nice. So, but uh, either way, you may. Uh, you, that's how you uh, you make your mark, right? You, would you believe that? Right. Yeah. This, uh, um. So you've uh, been working in the service industry for uh, fifteen years now. Uh, I got. I got to talk about this before I forget. Um all the pins on your vest that you have there. Now, uh, in some movies, they, uh, they say that's your flair. Do you, is that for work or you do it on purpose? I don't have 15 pieces. I don't think <laughs> Jennifer Aniston's going to be mad. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is just for fun. I've got, some of them were sent to me. Some of them I bought. Um, I don't wear this to work. Usually I wear this most, like I don't wear this to my job at the ramen restaurant at food dog. I, wear this for private events if I'm able to, if it's not a formal setting, mostly for TikTok and just because I like it. Yeah. But I'm not running out of space and it's getting colder. So now I have a jacket and now I'm starting to put pins on my jacket. Oh, that's cool. And Mandalorian but, there. So this is the way. <laughs> this is the way. I'm a little sock thumb. Got a bunch of little ones. I keep getting sent a bunch of little pins. That's cool. Um <laughs> So when you started bartending years ago, uh, nine years ago, you said, was there any, were you nervous or anything like that? Because you're uh, probably doing well on the floor, but then all of a sudden they said, we want you behind the bar. But uh, what was that like for you when all, all of a sudden they suggested you do that? It was, I was anxious for sure, but um, I don't really, I guess I wasn't that anxious. I was really eager to learn something new. Um, I thought being a bartender was like the really cool job in the restaurant. Um, my the person that trained me wasn't the nicest person in the world. Actually, she ended up getting me fired, which is really funny. Oh, um, but I worked. I was working at Chewy's. Um, it was a Tex-Mex restaurant, so I made a bunch of margaritas. That's really all I really learned how to do on my first bartending job. We didn't have any draft beer, so I had no idea how to pour draft beer. 
Um, our liquor selection was very, very limited. It was mostly tequila. So when it came to any tequila style drink, that was probably the thing I knew how to make the most. But um, yeah, my first bartending gig, I wasn't, I was anxious, but I guess I was more eager, I think is the right word. Mm. I was eager to try something new. Where, uh, and was, that was fun. Well, uh, were, were you getting tired of working the tables? Uh, or uh, was it welcome adjustment? Just I wasn't tired of working tables. I ended up doing both for a long, like for a year or so. I would pick up serving shifts and I would have a bar shift here and there. And I then I started just working more bar shifts and more bar shifts. Mm-hmm. Money wise, about the same just because it's a chain restaurant. Oh. But now, yeah, I wasn't tired of anything really. Just want to try something new. Now you've worked the corporate life, working at Buffalo Wild Wings, and uh, I've never personally had to ever put on a uh, costume or anything like that uh, to be the Buffalo, uh, as as you said. It was that nerve wracking at all, or I mean, you said that the kids stepped on your feet, they pulled on your horns, all that stuff. Uh, my horns. <laughs> um, it. I was. 17 so i feel like at the time it was just a job to get me through the summer my it wasn't i wasn't that i was just i don't know i just didn't really think about much of the service industry when i was working at buffalo wild wings because it was my first service industry job if that makes sense Mm. i just thought it was a job to get me through the summer but while i was working and like while i was going through college and i needed a part-time job just you know pay for my college life basically sure um i took that experience from buffalo wild wings and put it on my resume because that was really the only job that i ever had at the time and i guess expanded my career so, by working at another restaurant so you uh you did you finish college i did i have a bachelor's in psychology and um my, yeah, my major was psychology, and I almost double majored in sociology, so I have a minor in sociology. Wow. Okay. Now, those are actually pretty groovy degrees in order to have to work behind the bar, because if you were to write a dissertation or a whatever they call it, um, write a paper on certain people's type of personalities, you've got an entire, uh, entire like, samples, you know, sample selection of all your... in of all the people that are in your bar, would you use them at their personalities? You go home and write, write down various things or something like that about it. I don't definitely don't go home and write things down, but I definitely use my psych degree. I use my sociology degree too. Well, that's not a degree, but I still use like the, um, the stuff I learned in sociology because that's the study of people, not just a person. Yeah. So seeing different social trends and seeing different drink trends that happen throughout time how some things are coming back in style. Those are really interesting to just notice, but I definitely use my psychology degree a lot, all the time, every single day that I'm behind the bar, psychoanalyzing either why, why would somebody come sit at a bar top? Either they want to be by themselves doing whatever they need to do, have a meal alone, or they want to talk to somebody. So you have to be able to pick up on those social cues too. Sure. So what are your thoughts on like people that come into a bar and say, uh, I just want to be alone, and they're sitting in the middle of a public area. What, what would you? What would your thoughts be on that? That's eh, not my problem. I will leave you alone if you need to, but I can't like talk for anybody else around you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I've often wondered about that because you know people say I want to be alone, but they put themselves in a public situation, and I'm like, well, then why are you here? And you can eat just as easily go to the liquor store, and then go home and drink in the dark, but. Maybe the change of scenery, it's not necessarily being alone in the, maybe it's changing the space around you. Uh, maybe it's but still not wanting to be social with another person. Oh, uh, okay. Makes sense to me. <laughs> but I guess why, it's why people go to Starbucks. Just so they can't work at home, they might just have to work at Starbucks and be alone, even though that's a social setting as well. Yeah, and, and sit there and pretend like they're writing the great American novel while sitting in the corner with a uh, latte or something like but that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But it's not a <laughs> As you've bartended over the last nine years, you said you went from just uh, basic margaritas. Have you le- uh, uh, how quickly did you learn to not necessarily hate, but resent the uh, margarita or resent the, dr- uh, I've lost it, blender. Uh, how long did it take you to start resenting the blender? 
So um, we did have a blender at Chewy's. I hated it every time that it came off. But when it came to our frozen margaritas, we had like big old slurpy machines. Oh, cool. So when it came to those, those were easy, but it was a pain in the ass to clean. Yeah. Like cleaning those was a nightmare. Um, we had a blender for pina coladas and like strawberry daiquiris. When I got when I left, when I got fired from that job, I never had to deal with any slurpy machine or a blender ever again. Mm-hmm. So I have never, ever had to deal with that ever again. Knock on whatever <laughs> wood I can find around me. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, it's a, it's long, uh, very long proven story that all bartenders resent their uh, their blender. You know, just really busy night. Somebody comes up for a fr- uh, frozen margarita or strawberry daiquiri and we're like, it's broken. You know, just because we don't want to clean the damn thing when we're done with it or uh, every so. Right. But uh, so how how have you been enjoy- enjoying bartender uh, bartending? Because you seem like all of your TikTok videos, all your Instagram posts, you seem like you just thoroughly enjoy what you do. Um, I guess it was there's a lot there's a lot of different angles of why I really like my job. One is that it keeps me creative. I really even though the um, lockdown was like awful and terrible, it really helped with my creativity. Just being inside and being a bartender just and not having anything to do or any work, I would just create at home and it kind of mentally helped me Mm -hmm. like stay at like baseline. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I also within the nine years of bartending experience, I didn't work at a bar for three years. Um, I switched careers and I was very unhappy with myself. And so coming back to the job that I've really enjoyed because I thought it was fun originally was it was, I love my job. I don't feel like I really work a day in my life because I enjoy my job so much. Oh, that's cool. And creating at home. And I like, I just like sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and want to think of something cool and make a syrup in my kitchen at like two or three in the morning. Oh, so oh, yeah. you make your own you know, syrups and stuff like that? Uh, if I go to the grocery store and I go to the, you know how there's a weird fruit section of the grocery store yeah. that has like dragon fruit and like horn melons and stuff like that? If I see anything that's on sale and I can like see if there's any herbs on sale, I'll make my own syrup here. Uh, yeah. Uh, like how unique uh, of, of syrups? I mean. The last one I did was a blackberry rosemary. Yeah. A blackberry rosemary syrup um, from my sister's wedding. Um, we have these little, I got a huckleberry jam. So I'm going to might reduce that down and add some water and make a syrup out of that. Because huckleberries are not native to Virginia, right? Um, do some cool cocktails with those. So, uh, what's it like out in Virginia right now? It's fall, cold, dark at five p.m. <laughs> <laughs> cold for my sister's wedding two days ago, and now it's seventy degrees today. So, it's very back and forth when it comes to the weather. See, I thought uh, out. I live in West Texas, and I thought it was the weather schizophrenic out here because. I'm originally from Oregon and moved okay. out, uh, moved down to Texas for work uh, about 10 years ago. And we have like, at this time of year, we have like 40 degree temperature swings. It'll, it, I'll wake up in the morning. It'll be 33 degrees. And by the afternoon it's 80. And so it sounds, uh, sounds like Virginia has got pretty much the same thing. Yeah. And, definitely the same. It doesn't get up to 80 degrees anymore here, yeah. but it definitely could start at 40 and then maybe hit, 65 to 75 degrees and then drop down to freezing. Yeah. Now, um, when I was doing research for the, the series I did on TikTok for haunted restaurants and bars, it seems like Virginia has a ton of ghost stories going, uh, going around that, that area. Have you ever done like a beer or beer crawl or anything like that where for the haunted stories around that area? I or, have not. Or does your I restaurant have a work- ghost? My restaurant probably does have a ghost. Um, not the current restaurant that I used to work in, but the dive bar that I worked in like years ago probably more than likely has a ghost. Like what happened? But, but aside from the building being old, they do ghost tours literally in the same like area. Uh-huh. So I'm assuming that there's a ghost somewhere around there. Mm-hmm. There's, there was this like big like parking lot and everybody would meet and do a haunted ghost tour around the, the, that part of the city. And they always met right in front of my restaurant. Oh, uh, so you haven't had any, uh, anything interesting happen to you? Like, uh, you know, dis- uh, 
disappearing bottles or things falling off the shelves on, uh, uh, with no explanation or anything like that? No, there was only, the only time I can think of is there was one that one night that I closed and opened the next day. And then the next day that I came in, there was napkins all over the place. I don't know if it was a ghost or if it was one of my cooks. I don't know. We can just say it's a ghost, but <laughs> there was napkins all over the place. That was the only time that something weird happened. Yeah. So uh, at the place you work at right now, uh, it's you. Now forgive me for forgetting. You said it's a, it's a full bar, right? It is a full bar. Yeah. And uh, do you? I think uh, do you use the bar for your TikTok videos? Sometimes, sometimes I do. I have like a roll of tape and I stick my phone in it, <laughs> and then I just make my drink really quick, mm. and then I edit it later after the shift. Um, it looks like yeah. a, a really nice place. What's uh, what's the clientele like in there? The clientele, can, well, we're right next to uh, Virginia Commonwealth University, so we're right next to the college campus. Um, but we, our clientele is very diverse. We have a whole group of regulars that are like older men, and then we have some regulars that are like in their 20s and 30s. And then we have a bunch of college students that come in and love to eat their ramen. You know how college kids love ramen? This is just a little elevated ramen. Yeah, just you know, with a little but bit extra our, to it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Our clientele... Is definitely diverse. And that's another thing that I love about living in Virginia is, or living in Richmond especially, is that every, you're not one place and you're going to feel uncomfortable. Everybody is welcome. That's very cool. Uh, everybody should always be welcome in a bar. Uh, there shouldn't be any problems. It should be like, uh, I can't, no, like, I can't think of the right term right now, but just a place where everybody can go uh, no matter what. And Right. I feel like, feels like family the moment you walk in. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, smile when they come in, yell at them like they're family. Yeah. It's, it's just, just be. Exactly. Yeah. So how was COVID uh, handled out in Virginia? Did you have any problems? I actually had COVID. Oh, um, you did? I did. So, well, when it came to like the lockdown, we were stuck in, um, we were in lockdown for what? four or five months or so. We didn't go back to 50% until maybe the middle of the summer of 2020. Um, and with that, we still were wearing masks. We had required our guests to wear masks unless they were eating. Um, but everybody, almost everybody in my restaurant, I think, had COVID or at least had knew somebody that had COVID. Um, I caught, had COVID, which was funny because we had a we had a guest that was argumentative about our, like the mask mandate for the state, which was if you're inside, you have to wear a mask. Like we don't make the rules, we don't like it either, but we want to keep everybody safe. Right. Arguing with me about the mask mandate, saying he doesn't need to wear one, and then not even two days later, I tested positive for COVID. Uh, uh yeah, that's so. Yeah, I I'm still trying to get over all the TikTok videos and social media posts. Of, you know, people completely flipping out over. Uh, you know, causing fights about wearing masks or being vaccinated or anything like that. And I, it's, I've almost become numb to it. Uh, you, is that wrong? <laughs> just, you know, uh, it's not, I feel like it's not wrong. It's a way to kind of just like cope with how we're, how society is responding to something that's not, that we're not comfortable with. It's not, it's not, it's just not, I mean, I don't know. I feel like it's just, if we're trying to keep everybody else around us safe, then we're just trying to do our jobs too. Mm. In addition to keeping other people safe. I don't understand why it has to be an argument or a fight. Neither do I. It makes me want to serve less. Like ultimately I have the right to refuse service. It's going to make me not want to serve you at all. Period. Right. Uh, I mean, it's just that easy. I mean, if your restaurant has the rule uh, that they have to be wearing a mask, uh, just, yeah, you know, I could have the right to refuse service to anybody. That includes you. So, Exactly. I mean, it's uh, pretty simple, but, you know, all these people completely freaking out. And then the, there's the people that say they can't wear a mask because they have asthma. And uh, then it just makes me want to slap somebody. I don't, it's, yeah, I just become numb to the whole situation. But so you had COVID. Uh, did you also have to, uh, have to take time off for the lockdown just like everybody else? I took time off. I was in lockdown for months and that's how the whole TikTok thing, thing even started. It's just because I was locked inside every day. The only place I went to was the grocery store and the liquor store yeah. because they remained open. Um, 
But once we came back into 50%, me being one of the managers, I had to be there a little bit more than the other employees. Um, once we started opening for outdoor and indoor, it just, it got busy because we don't have as many tables, but people wanted to come out and kind of experience normality again and being understaffed. It was a whole thing. And then we all got sick and we were closed for another like two months. Yeah. So, so especially living in a college or living next to a college, the college got shut down. That had to hurt uh, business a little bit. If, if it got shut down, shut down yeah. a, lot, a lot of colleges. It did get shut down. Yeah. It did get shut down. Um, yeah, there were, were barely any students at all unless they lived in the city themselves. Um, we were next to a big theater, then all those events got canceled. We have a bunch of concert venues around the city. Those all got canceled. It, the restaurants definitely took a beating. There was maybe six or seven that we lost in the city to oh, the wow. pandemic and the financial. Oh, yeah. So um, you said a lot of music venues. Is, do you have a lot of music playing there all the time? Am I at the restaurant or in general? In general and around the town. Is, uh, is it uh, music big around the city? We have a lot of festivals. I wouldn't say music is necessarily like a big thing in Richmond, but we do have a lot of concerts. We have a lot of festivals. There's live music. And I don't even know what I'm trying to say. We have the national, the Broadberry, um, a lot of open mic nights around the area just for people to come out in the community to come out and support each other. But I don't know if music is just like the huge thing about Richmond. Any great shows that you've been to? Um, I was just on Machine Gun Kelly. That was really cool. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah. That was rad. Um, my girlfriend is a singer, so she does some open mic nights around the city as well. Um, a couple of my friends are in bands and they do some music around the city, mostly at breweries, which is a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm just glad that live music is coming back in general. Yeah. Um, I actually watch uh, some of my heroes out there like uh, Metallica, Dave Grohl, Billy Joel, you know, uh, all my biggest heroes, all, you know, they're like, thank God I'm back out, you know, uh, back on tour or okay them telling stories that their kids are saying, dad, will you please call your manager and get out there and play or something like that? Cause the, even their, right. You're embarrassing me, dad. <laughs> their, uh, their, even their families can see how antsy they are, but it's, uh, the big names and even the small names get, uh, uh, some of my friends who play back on the West coast to see them go, Oh, thank God I can go back now and keep playing. It's actually a really cool feeling to watch them actually do that yeah it's not it's not just their job it's their passion as well so to see people back in like their passion and their happiness is always really good to see too yeah hey bartender I want to take a second to talk about the performance package 4.0 from manscape.com. It contains the lawnmower 4.0 an all new skin safe electric trimmer the Weed Whacker, Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, Crop Reserver, Anti-Chafing Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver, Ball Spray Toner, Magic Mats, Disposable Shaving Mats. It also contains two free gifts, the Shed, which is a travel bag to keep everything in, and Manscaped Boxers, Anti-Chafing Boxers. Go to manscaped.com right now and use promo code HEYBARTENDER at checkout and get 20% off your entire order, plus free shipping you can't beat that 20 percent off plus free shipping it's coming up on christmas time it would be the perfect gift for that man in your life or if you just need it for yourself just so you can feel a little bit better a little bit more secure go to manscape.com and use promo code hey bartender to get 20 percent off plus free shipping go there today hey bartender so back into the bar. Now, do you have a favorite story that happened to you while you were while you were working? I have a lot of good stories. I can tell you a story that happened recently. It didn't happen to me specifically, but I was there. Oh. And I'm glad that I didn't hear this because I would have lost my mind on these people. <laughs> so I'm really glad that I didn't. I was just out of earshot of hearing this. Mm. Okay. So... This happened, what day was it? Saturday night. This, like, this past weekend, actually. Um, we had a busy Saturday night. I'm closing down the bar. Um, it's just 
we close at 11 p.m. So it's maybe 11, 15, 15 minutes. Yeah, we didn't lock the door yet. That was the first no, no. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just my coworkers and I having our shift drinks, closing down the shop. Like I'm mopping, I'm putting dishes away. And um, there's about four of us. Yeah, about, no, three of us and my manager, Allie. Um, so these two girls come in. They're in their mid-20s. They're definitely from the campus. Um, so they, these two girls come in. And Allie, like, walks up to them. She says, hi, how are you guys doing? And they're like, oh, we, are you guys open? And Allie said, no, I'm sorry. We closed about 15 minutes ago. <laughs> they... Um, this is with all seriousness, looked at my manager in her eyes and said, Oh, do you have any leftovers? Leftovers? That leftovers. I don't know what that meant. What does leftovers mean? Like leftover food? Leftover drinks? You want like a match shot? Yeah. Like I don't know. <laughs> so aside from her just looking confused and angry and just like a lot of like mixed emotions. She told them, uh, no, we don't. And then the other girl gave her puppy dog eyes and said, but I'm not from here, please. <laughs> like that's going to change the answer yeah. of anything. Yeah. So I'm glad that I didn't hear that or that conversation did not happen to me because I would have been just appalled, angry. <laughs> so probably that- would have. They were they were looking for a handout or it, that's well like also what if we were open yeah. were you gonna still ask us for leftovers yeah. I'm, I there's a lot of follow up questions that I have about <laughs> with with this question I just I'm just like <laughs> what leftovers were they have you tried going to either side of our restaurant to the other places that are still open for food and like what are you smoking and like what's going on yeah because who would ask I just don't get it. Yeah. And that happened a couple of days ago. Yeah. So how would you have handled that? I would have been probably if I would have been very angry and I would have definitely been trying to control the anger and rage <laughs> of the stupidity of people. I just don't understand. Who do you like would you ever walk into a grocery store that's closing and say, Hey, do you have any bad fruit that like you think is gonna go bad? Can I just have that? Yeah. As people are like, who does that? Where, where are the like, there's no manners or home training or anything that comes with that. Yeah. And the entitlement. Oh my God. I would have, see, I'm already losing my mind. And the conversation <laughs> never happened to me. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've run into uh, a number of people that uh, have tried to spout off that they know how to, how the industry runs better than the person that actually works in the industry saying, no, no, you, uh, you close up. Uh, you close at one o'clock, but you're allowed to serve liquor until two thirty. And it's like, no, we're supposed to stop serving at one thirty. You know, we stop serving at one o'clock. We pull the drinks at one thirty, but because we're only open till one, and they try to uh, throw laws at you and stuff like that, and you know, uh, I, but that's a totally different level. <laughs> you know, it's just yeah. right. It's not. I don't even think it was about alcohol. I don't uh, even think it was about. So in the state of Virginia, we have to have a kitchen open in order to sell alcohol. Yes. We have to make, like, there has to be snacks. There's not, it can't be just booze. It can't be like Vegas or anything like that that just sells alcohol. Mm. Whatever. So my kitchen was already gone. So I just, I'm very, I was so confused. The whole situation was, and do you, that was a new one. I never experienced that one before. Uh, uh, when the bartenders are, uh, you said the kitchen was already closed. Do the bartenders have to make appetizers late at night? Uh, if somebody needs something? Oh, no. Once our, once our kitchen is closed, we're done serving alcohol. That's uh, how our restaurant works. Oh, okay. So our kitchen cleans up really fast, and then they leave. Um, people who are still enjoying their food can, and I can still be working around them, but our last call and our last serving are at the same time. Okay, so there's no, not going to be anybody that gets uh, goes completely off the marker if you close at uh, 1 o'clock, but somebody comes in and orders dinner at 12.50 or... Yeah, you know, uh, there's a there's a good amount of, there's a there's a nice buffer of time mm. for people to have their last order and the last drink and then enjoy their food together. Okay, yeah. 
because uh, you know, like in the movie Waiting, you see the uh, the cooks. They've got everything prepped, and I've seen so many cooks do that. They're like, okay, just two more minutes, and then we're out of here. And they think we're going to get out of here fast today. And then one more customer comes in, and then they completely flip out. It, but not with any of the gross things that they did on Waiting, like uh, messing with the food or whatever. Have you ever right. seen? Have you seen that movie? Or am I? I don't, I don't think so, but I know what kind of, I know what that experience is like. Yeah. I guess when chefs in back of house being angry when a last minute ticket comes in. Yeah, um, I, I get the same when I put all of my cocktail stuff away and then somebody orders another cocktail right when I put everything away. Yeah. Like it's a pain in the butt for me to take everything about out, back out again, but I'm going to do it because it's my job. Yeah. So I plugged that movie way too much. The people who made that movie, uh, uh, owe me money because I, I make references to that movie all the time. So it's I'm sure it's on a streaming service. You'll find it. It stars Ryan Reynolds, Anna Ferris, and uh, okay. it's yeah, uh, another plug for that movie anyway. But uh, okay. oh, no. um it it's just it's just a almost too accurate depiction of working in the restaurant industry. Anybody who's worked in the restaurant industry can relate to it. But anyway, enough about that movie so tell me about a uh, uh, little bit about your customers you don't have to go into specifics so that uh so you don't have to uh if in case they listen uh, you get them to listen to this podcast which i hope they do tell me a little bit about their cust- uh, your customers around there uh, well you've already said that they're like college students but do you have like a particular crowd that uh you look forward to seeing when you work I would add to any other service industry person, any other bartender service industry friend in the area that comes to visit. That's the majority of my friend group anyway. Yeah. So seeing any of my friends, especially from the service industry, come in and visit me is always the best. Um, I love when my friends bring their parents. I think that's the best. Like I love meeting new people from somebody else that I know, if that makes sense mm-hmm. too. I guess being able to find a personal connection with any one of my customers or my regulars really is something that I look forward to now being able to call them my friends, not just my customers too. Now a new person comes into your bar and you, you decide I've got to, you know, I've uh, got to talk to this person. Maybe they've shown up like two or three times, but they really haven't said anything to you. What do you, uh, what are your, what's your advice on your technique to get to know the person, become their friend? Well, I, body language is a big thing. Um, if a person is not, if a person's looking up and looking around, that's meaning they probably want to have a conversation with someone. It doesn't necessarily have to be me. It could be anybody around them. But if a person's like looking down at their phone or reading a book or just really short with whatever their answers are, then I'm not going to bother that person. Um, but if, let's say that somebody came into my restaurant, sat down, um, seen them a couple times, they keep ordering the same thing. I would try to suggest something that's the same, but a little bit different just to kind of expand their palate out. And that will also extend the conversation into something more. If mm. that makes sense as well. If somebody ordered the same IPA every single time, I would say, Oh, I see that you like this. Have you tried this? This is local. It kind of tastes the same, but it has a little bit more of a citrusy, whatever the fuck you want to say to make it sound a little bit different. Mm. And See if they like it. Maybe even buy that drink for them to see if they like it. Then you can maintain that relationship. Now, do you uh, do you look at things like how they're dressed? Like if they came in wearing, uh, well, uh, you've got the Mandalorian uh, pin on your chest. Uh, if they came in wearing a Star Wars T-shirt, would you use that as a uh, springboard to start talking to the person to get to know them a little bit? Probably. I guess that's. I guess that goes. Hand, it's not. It doesn't go with hand in hand with body language. I guess observing another person and how not necessarily how their body language is, but what they're wearing is another thing. I didn't think about that at first. Um, I didn't think about that at all. Um, I have a, my work backpack is right here and it has Mandalorian all over it. Oh, that's awesome. (laughs) I walk into work and I have my backpack on. Um, I always get complimented on it too. (laughs) Definitely. We'll talk about stores, but, um, I guess any sort of way to find a connection with someone just to make sure that saying, Hey, if you want to be left alone, that's great. But if you need anything, I'm over here. Or if you need somebody to talk to, I am also here to listen. It's just, it's all situational, I guess. Do you have a a story of when you, you weren't, it was least expected just all of a sudden, Oh my God, we're friends. 
you know, it just happened right then and there. I guess with, I have this one bar regular named Patrick and I'm definitely calling him out because he is the best. <laughs> um, so Patrick is, um, he is at food dog every, almost every single day. And me being one of the newer people there, because some of my employees have been there for six years, five to six years. And I've only been at food dog for a year and a half, maybe two, almost two. Mm. Um, so getting to know the regulars that have been there the longest are always important to me. But it's really awkward to be like, hi, I'm Katie. I know I'm new and you've met a lot of new people here before. But I want to make a relationship with you. It's kind of awkward and difficult. Mm. I don't want it to seem forced if that's what if that's what I'm trying to say. Sure. Um, so I noticed Patrick had um, a little bit of a New England accent. Very, 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 very slight because he's been in Virginia for a long time. Um, so I said, where are you from? Cause he noted, I noticed that he would watch, um, New England, like the Red Sox, stuff like that. I'm like, where are you from? Where did you grow up? Um, he said he's from Massachusetts. My dad's side of the family is also from Massachusetts. So we talked about, um, where we're, where our families are from, how close that was to each other. And we just kind of bonded over stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, and he reminded me a lot of my dad. So I have like a bit like Patrick has a big spot in my heart because he reminds me a lot of my dad. So being able to talk to him, like he is like a father figure is really cool. Yeah, that's cool. So he's my buddy. <laughs> now on the flip side of that coin, uh, what do, uh, are there things that customers uh, do or could do to get on your good side? Just be a good person, be respectful, be respectful to the people around you, respect pronouns, respect, just respect in general goes a long, long way. Sure. That, that's pretty easy. And I know that I can look like kind of intimidating as a bartender, but just respect goes a long way. Like you really can't go wrong with that. Just niceness. Yeah. So like everybody else, probably uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, when uh, I think pretty much almost 80% of the people that are on TikTok today probably discovered it right at the beginning of the pandemic and realized, oh, something to do while I'm sitting at home uh, quarantined. Now, uh, all your stories, they you you show people how to make drinks, you show, uh, and you do a couple maybe short bar stories or something like that. Is that just a hobby to keep your mind busy or uh, are you having fun with it? Yes and yes. Um, <laughs> it, definitely keep, it definitely kept me busy during the lockdown, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um hearing all the trending sounds and how I can relate that to my own personal life and the stuff that I experience behind the bar or in life in general, but I basically live behind the bar. So that sure. is my life. Um, but I also have a lot of fun with it. Um, it's fun to hear something that's trending and how a lot of people use that same sound for so many different topics, but to apply it to my own, to my own life kind of gives, the sense of individuality, but also community within a silly little app. Mm. But that makes sense. But yeah. Yeah. I'm still therapeutic. Getting, therapeutic to oh. get all those stories out through an app for sure. <laughs> I'm still getting used to it. Uh, the, the haunted restaurants and bars things. That was a huge leap for me. Cause usually I just use it to advertise when a new podcast gets put out, but mm-hmm. uh, to actually, to do the TikTok challenges, the dances. No, you're not going to catch me doing that. But uh, it. But that's my comfort zone, personally. You know. <laughs> I definitely don't do many dances, but I tr- I try. I have no rhythm. You can ask. You can ask my partner. <laughs> she will. But when it comes to like the ones that have like an audio or some sort of dialogue, um, I definitely try to hop on and find a way to associate it to bartending. Yeah. Some sort of way. I definitely do the. Tito's and vodka thing a lot with a lot of these sounds. If like when somebody would order a Tito's and vodka, I would be like, you're done. Absolutely yeah. not. There is no, not going to do that. <laughs> um, I use that story a lot because it happens the, a lot. Yeah. So, you know, you've been in the industry for almost 15 years. You had to have run into the usual phrases like, why don't you get a real job or, uh, maybe even your parents saying you you've got a degree. What are you doing? Or you know, you had to have <laughs> run into things like that. Uh, am am I am I right? Uh, am I right or completely off the mark? One hundred percent correct. That ha- uh, 
that happens if it hasn't happened at food dog yet i that's a good thing and um my dad is my biggest fan mm-hmm. he, he paid for my college and everything and he's like my girl my daughter's a bartender let me show you this let me show you her tiktok i want to be on your tiktok my dad is my biggest fan my mom is also proud of me she she's also i think she's more proud of the fact that i'm a manager in a restaurant mm. over the fact that i like live the bartender life a lot um she does ask me about drinks sometimes but i think um i've gotten a lot of pressure from her specifically but it's not i know it's in it comes from a good place if that makes mm-hmm. sense but i've had some guests say oh what do you really do and i'm just like holding like my this money out like counting change and i'm like i don't know this monopoly money i don't <laughs> I, you're right i should get a real job and then another point that i would make to these guests that would say this to me would be would you want somebody who is 21 no like offense to any 21 year old bartenders that are learning to make your old fashioned than when they've never made one or made like two in their entire lives. Or would you rather have somebody who is, how old was I? 27 who has made old fashions for six years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would you rather have somebody with experience making your drink that you're paying 10 plus dollars for? Or would you rather have some 21 year old that's a bartending to get through college to make your drink? Yeah, yeah, the the disrespect that people in the service industry get it just, it gets to me because there's that why don't you get a real job? What the hell am I doing? I get well, what what constitutes a job? I do a service, I get paid for it, and you know exactly. that's so tech. You know, you look at people and go, technically, this is a job because I'm doing a service, I get it paid is. for it, just like whatever job that they happen to be doing. And it, it's always gotten, uh, gotten to me. And one of the reasons why I started the podcast so I could, you know, help, uh, help support people in the service industry and get the word out there that the stuff we do is actually insanely hard work. And, uh, and we don't really get paid a whole lot for it, but it's not a job of necessity. Some of us like yourself, it seems like we just do it cause we like it. We like it. It's also like when you find when when you find your calling, whatever it is, it's yeah. I mean, it's I would I would I would love to take every single individual person that has shitted on the service industry, didn't tip, um, like when are you getting a real job? Oh, you probably don't make that much money. To go behind a bar and work a shift, oh, yeah. trade spots with me. I would love that. Mm-hmm. Just to just see the sheer panic every time, like the ticket machine would go off. Right. I feel like everybody should work in a service, not not necessarily a restaurant, but like retail, mm-hmm. for sixty days, ninety days, and through the holidays. <laughs> we want to kill them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right at the end, though. Yeah. Um, I feel like that would help a lot with. A more of like a human, like a like an understanding, just and a general well like respect of anybody who's doing a service for you, because even though it's our job, you're not entitled to the service. Yeah, I've said that on this podcast uh, a handful of times. Like, have it as like your the last uh, the last quarter of your senior year in high school, or even a college course where you have to work at a restaurant for one semester or something like that. And uh, how did Daniel Tosh put it? Like, uh, so you'll know uh, that that extra ranch is not as important as you, as you, uh, as you think it is. Uh, Cause these people just don't understand. It's uh, sure. They went to, they went to school. They read all these books. They, uh, and just, they're expecting as soon as they get out of that school, they're going to get the six figure job doing whatever. But uh, and but if they were to have to work in the service industry or something like that, they're like, ew, no. And but it's it's still a good job. And we uh, and if you're a good personality, do, oh, I don't want to use the word good personality. If you have a strong personality, you can end up making a lot of money just because of your Agreed. character. Agreed. Also, I even if working in the service industry is not your career or if bartending is something that you're doing for a short amount of time before you start, whatever your career is, the skills that you learn behind the bar, not just making drinks, 
you can take anywhere with you. Absolutely. Communication, multitasking, um, just overall cleanliness, memorization. Yeah. Every there's a lot of skills that you can put on a resume by working in the service industry. Absolutely. Uh, in situations like yours, where you're well, you're an actual bar manager. Uh, that that's your yes. title, right? Uh, most of the time in uh, the bars that I ever worked at, as soon as the manager left for the day, which was usually about 15 minutes after I got there, uh, it technically I was the manager. I had to make the hard decisions. I had to help the servers with whatever problem they were having with the point of sale system or something like that. And so management experience, even though I didn't have the title, I didn't realize until much later that I accumulated management experience out of that. And uh, communication skills. I still think I need to work on that a lot, but, uh, you know, just, just because, uh, you know, I, my, my basic personality, but like you said, you, uh, you take away more than what you think of or than what you think while working in the service industry. Right. So, I mean, you're completely act like you're right. It's, and I'm very blessed to work with a management staff of, um, that are, is very supportive and we're there five, six days a week working. Um, at least my boss is always there. But I know in previous jobs that I've definitely also gained that managerial experience without having the title or the pay mm. at all. So, yeah. And I was able to take that experience and that confidence and actually gain the title and the pay mm. for it in a different setting, in a different restaurant entirely. Is um, oh, I uh, This is something that I've only ran into in the last year. Uh, I found out uh, on the East Coast it's very common that bartenders don't get an hourly wage. Is that the case where you're at? That is true. We get paid a very low wage. Um, it's for my restaurant. It's definitely below minimum wage. Um, servers around the state of Virginia get paid about two thirteen an hour, two dollars and thirteen cents. Um, depending on the restaurant, bartenders can get paid a little bit more, but it's not minimum wage at all. Mm. Um, I still don't think that is fair. I also think that the tip out percentage from ser- the server's drink sales should be higher for the bartender. Mm. But that also depends on the restaurant that you are in. And I mean, I'm not going to get into specific numbers. It's just small enough that it's, in- it's insignificant mm. for the job that the work that you did, the time that you took away from your customer base, your bar guests to make a drink for a server. And you only get like a very small percentage of that sale. Right. So yeah, it's actually driven me crazy. Very- it's actually driven me crazy over the last year because people are telling me stories that, uh, they've actually had to go to an ATM at the end of the night because they didn't make enough tips percentage wise of their sales in order to tip out their bus or their bartender, their, or you know, their hostess and cooks. Uh, uh, and I'm like, that's just wrong. Uh, who came up with that idea? That is- and- um, that, see, I haven't had an experience like that since working at a chain restaurant. Mm-hmm. Um, I can definitely see that happening in chain restaurants where you really, you have five servers on the floor and three bartenders. So on a Wednesday night or a week night, and then you don't, uh, the money that's in the pot just doesn't get divided well. Cause there's so many people because that's a corporate standard. I definitely have had that experience with corporate, but at least with right now with everybody being short staffed, um, it's not as bad, but it's still, it's still a flawed system in my opinion. And, uh, Especially uh, when all of a sudden they they're running food and they're they're thinking, okay, I'm really doing good tonight, and they close out a table that was like 150 dollars, and they uh, 150 dollar tab, and that table decided not to tip, and then they go, oh crap, I am screwed tonight, and that's just awful. It is awful, and that I mean, and I feel like I don't I don't think. I've been noticing like shitty tippers happening more and more recently. And this happens a lot around it's, it happens either one or two ways around the holidays. You get people that are really, really stingy because they have to pay for holiday shit. I'm not going to give any excuses for people that are not tipping. It's garbage. If you can't tip, stay the hell home. Exactly. And then there's people who are really generous at the same time. But yeah, that's terrifying to know that you put in like seven to eight hours of work 
And then one table can mess up your entire like income for the day, yeah. for the week, actually. Think about it if you're only working part-time at a restaurant. Yeah, they're telling me stories like they had to go over to their cook and say, I promise I'll get to you tomorrow, or I got to go and go to an ATM and get some money out. And so you're actually operating in the negative or the manager's guess based on your percentage of sales of how much tips you should have earned that day and then claim that on uh, claim that on your paychecks and then your paycheck is like negative 20 bucks or something like that. So uh, paychecks are like always zero dollars. Yeah. They were all until I started working in management, my paychecks were always goose egg, nothing. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, like a dollar or so if I was putting in some like overtime but it was only a dollar so it really didn't do anything um but yeah I haven't had that experience of like not being able to tip out somebody but I, you're right it's it is an assumption that we're going to be able to take x, x percentage of your food sales and x percentage of your alcohol sales because we think that you were made up for it in the tips that you made Mm. Yeah. Plus some. Yeah, it's uh, that's uh, there's so many things wrong with that to me. But uh, nowadays they're uh, sitting back trying to figure out. Uh, what was the president was saying that he was uh, trying to figure out a, a livable wage to get rid of tipping altogether, give waiter waiters and servers and bartenders uh, a, a livable wage. And I'm sitting there thinking, well, good luck with that because you raise the minimum wage to what you think is livable, everything else goes up too. And that's correct. Yeah. In my mind, I'm not an, I'm not an economist or anything like that. That that's how things work. And I just don't see that working out too well for the lower class, supposed, supposed lower, lower class, but no, I agree. Inflation will definitely happen. Also, there's some nights that I would make, if we had to do an hourly, there would be really shitty nights that I make minimum wage an hour. There would be some nights that I make $40 an hour, $50 an hour mm. when there's like a really busy night. So there's that, there's that catch 22 that I always get stuck with when it comes to having like living a tipped wage job or having a non tipped wage job. It's more of, I like the hustle because I know that I can make more, but then there's always that one night with that one table that ruins it. Yeah. I never, I, I'm never happy. Basically, is that I don't know which one I would really want more. Yeah. And if you give me a little wage with like insurance and dental and all that good stuff, then we can talk a little bit more. But yeah. yeah. Um. Our, but it has to go with inflation and everything else. There maybe there should be a bonus program. There should be a bonus structure. There should be. Com- I still think there should always be commission. Yeah. I. Yeah, it's a good idea. I don't know. There, ne- there needs to be more debate and more like actual talking to the service industry about what their ideas are and how to make it easier for them because ultimately we serve everybody. Right. And if we can't find an agreement, then you're not going to have anybody serving you. Right. And uh, I mean, the way I see things back when I was bartending, uh, it was, I could rent a one bedroom, one bath apartment for $550 a month. And that was livable. But nowadays, where bartenders still get paid about the same, gets tipped about the same, that same one bedroom, one bath apartment, I'm sure is probably over twelve thousand or twelve hundred dollars a month by now, and so oh. it it's just overall harder, a harder life to live. Uh, mm-hmm. Not not very much room for amenities, uh, but of course, then people like your like my high school teachers. Well, you should learn to save money and budget. Screw you, you know. <laughs> Thank you. Right. I completely, completely agree. <laughs> I have like the big nose right now. Anyway. So, uh, uh, I think it's really awesome that your parents are incredibly supportive of your choice of, uh, careers, uh, being a bartender and being proud of you. I, every time I hear stories like that, uh, it makes me really happy. My, my parents personally, they weren't, uh, sure of it, but they were just happy that I was making money and taking care of myself. That's all they needed. But it's really cool to hear that your parents, uh, you know, they 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 saw you go to college, they saw you graduate, and but they see that you're happy working behind a bar, or working in a restaurant, and so that makes them happy, and that's that's really cool. Um, I 
commend your parents for that being supportive. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I like it's, I don't think they became super supportive until I came back from leaving because I didn't bartend for three years. I did the career change and tried to find a real job. Mm. And, um, I worked in the, I worked in, in the, like an office life nine to five. Um, but I was still, I was working with patients. I was working with mental patients. So I was still having interactions with people. Um, and using my degree, basically. Mm. But I think what, at least with my dad, um, he loves the fact that I'm a bartender because I'm always going to make him his drinks whenever I visit him, mm. for sure. I always have all, any gifts, they're always great because it's always like liquor. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, what he told me is that he noticed how happy I am because I have mental health issues myself. Mm -hmm. um a lot of anger and i've had um a lot of issues and trauma like throughout the life and throughout your journey basically everybody does so for my dad to see me happy and like really shining and glowing and he even said just getting the appreciation that you deserve for the work that you do really makes him happy as well so i just really happy that i'm making proud yeah and that's got to take a lot of stress off your shoulders uh knowing that yeah definitely I mean, even if they weren't supportive, I really honestly wouldn't like care. <laughs> so <laughs> no offense, no offense, mom and dad, but I literally wouldn't care because I'm happy with who I am. Mm -hmm. This is the happiest I've honestly have ever been as a person. Mm -hmm. And I think TikTok, honestly, I think TikTok and I think my, my employees and my coworkers and I, and my, my roommate for putting up with me making experiments all the time and making her taste test everything. But, um, yeah, bartending is definitely a lifesaver for sure. Now, uh, last question before we start wrapping up things here. Um, you said, uh, since you've studied psychology and, uh, all that, uh, all that stuff, one thing that I've only become, uh, aware of in the last two years is how bartenders can get, you know, we sit, we listen to people's problems we uh, were trying to be nice, let them get some of the stuff off their chest. But I was completely unaware of the fact uh, somebody told me recently that we're kind of uh, bartenders are kind of taking their problems and we put it on, on our shoulders. And uh, sometimes we forget to shake it off and it just builds and builds and builds. Do you uh, have you ever felt that problem before? And if you have had that problem before, what do you do to shake it off? Or what can um, we do? I feel like I've had before. I feel like I'm I'm more aware of it. I guess that comes with time and experience of noticing those signs that you're kind of taking on people's energy. You and my girlfriend put it in a good way is that you um the it's about wolves. It's about you um you the wolf like grows whichever which one you feed it. it could be a good one or a bad one. Um. So if I keep feeding negative energy, that negative wolf will grow and get stronger. If I feed off of positive energy and positive interactions with people, then that part of me will grow too. Um, it's hard, especially when you're an empathetic person, right? And as humans, we all have a certain level of empathy for other people. Um, Self-care is important. Making sure that you take time for yourself is important. And ultimately coming down to the fact that we're all human beings and we're all going through something. Your problem should is always is, is as important as another person's issue as well. Taking care of yourself is, is key. Making sure that you take time to watch your favorite TV show by yourself. We interact with people all day long. I love coming home and sitting on my couch, opening up a PBR, turning on like SNL, and just sitting by myself mm -hmm. with my cat. That kind of like woo saws the rest of the shift that I had. The stuff with the leftovers, I literally went home and I looked at the like all the leftovers in my fridge and I was like, I can give any of this stuff to them. And I'm just like, why does it matter? They're gone now. Yeah. I'm not gonna have to deal with that again. Yeah. So it's um a way what I would tell my patients actually is that you would picture yourself as a bright blue sky right you are the sky 
if a cloud comes up and makes your sky all cloudy and sad, is it cloudy forever? No. That cloud passes too. Same with people's problems. Same, same with that shitty guest and that shitty tip. It all passes. It's all temporary. Ah, that's. I try to have that mindset, but when I'm in the heat of the moment, I'm always mad. But <laughs> yeah, uh, that's very profound. I um, I like that uh, because uh, that's I I think a lot of bartenders and waitresses don't ever realize how much negative energy that follows us home, and just because we're not able to shake it right away, if at all, and it uh, that. That was very important uh, important for you to say. Thank you so much for that. For sure. So self-reflection is important. That was all I was going to ask that. Reflecting on yourself and reflecting every, like the highlights of your shift, the bad or the good is important, but then just leave it at the door. Mm-hmm. Leave it at the door. Don't take it home with you. Well, um, thank you so much for being on Hey Bartender Podcast. Uh, I... Uh, for people that are listening, I actually pre- uh, I'm going to tell them that I actually pressured you. I, f- I felt like I pressured you to be on the show quite a bit. You were very you were very very busy, but you managed to find some time off in your schedule in order to be on the show. Thank you so much. You're well. You didn't pressure me at all. I'm glad that I'm, I, I was actually able to do this. This was really fun. So uh, why don't you take a second here and uh, tell people if they want to find out more about you, your uh, where you, uh, your social media. Uh, how to contact you if you feel like it. Yeah. Why don't you let everybody know? Sure. Um, if you guys want to follow me on any social media, it is uh, bar daddy underscore. And that is for all of them. Instagram, TikTok. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I don't use it that often, but that's a fun little inside scoop inside of my head. Um, <laughs> and within all of those um, social medias, there's a link, um, a beacons page or a link tree. And it will have my email. Um, I have a YouTube page that I'm trying to put together. Um, if you want to book me for an event, there's my booking email in there as well. I have a booze delivery service where I have promo codes. It can save you money. You can get any of this cool stuff that I have behind me. I know you can't see it. <laughs> um, but, yeah. And I love um, meeting people. So if you're in the Virginia area, like Richmond area, if you want to visit me at Food Dog, I would love to meet some more people. I love interacting and making new connections. So yeah, that's it. That's all I got. <laughs> okay, very cool. So uh, once again, thank you so much for being on the show. And with that, people, it is last call. Last call for alcohol. Come on up to the bar and get something before I shut all of this stuff down and you go home thirsty. Uh, Big thanks to Katie Stewart for being on the show. That was a great conversation. We had uh, brought a lot of insight in in the psychological thing that we uh, deal with as bartenders. And uh, yeah, she was just a blast to talk to. Remember, uh, go follow her on all of her social media links at bar daddy underscore. Her TikTok videos are awesome. And yeah, you know, she's she's just really cool. Uh, big thanks to Laura Hope and the Arctones for giving me my theme song for this show. Uh, go check them out at laurahopeandthearc-tones.com. Go uh, download their music on iTunes, Spotify, Bandcamp.com. Uh, they've got a lot of great music. Just uh, go follow them, please. Uh, if you guys want to follow me on social media, all you have to do is go on to any social media. It's on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, they are all at Hey Bartender Podcast. Uh, if you want to go to the website, it's www.heybartenderpodcast.com. You can listen to past episodes there. You can uh, check out some Hey Bartender Podcast merch. Lots of fun. And remember, if you want to be on the show, you want to, uh, wouldn't mind being a guest on the show, talk about your life, promote yourself a little bit, uh, or you just have something to say that uh, needs to be heard. All you have to do is email me, dude at heybartenderpodcast.com, or you can DM me on any of the social medias that I just told you about. And that's it. Thank you for listening to Hey Bartender Podcast. Remember, I've come out with an episode almost every week, sometimes twice a week. You can always check it out on iTunes, Spotify. Uh, You can even tell Amazon Alexa, say, Alexa, play Hey Bartender Podcast, and she will do that for you. But, As always, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you so much for listening. And as usual, I wish you all lots of love, 
lots of sex, lots of happiness. And remember, don't take any shit from anyone. Good night. What do you mean it's last go? I just got here.